know, you're in control and, and, and you have the power to have more energy really easily at the, at the flip of a switch, but you do got to put in the work for sure. Right. Rob, and just for our listeners who are not aware of what we're talking about, could you describe <laughs> to us the moving parts of LIVO2 Adaptive Contrast and what it's all about? Yeah. So, you know, why are we doing any of this is we're, we're trying to increase the amount of oxygen inside of our bodies so that every single cell, from our brain to our skin to our eyes, everything works optimally. And what tends to happen over time as we age and from a lot of other things like environmental toxins or physical traumas is our circulatory system is not as robust and open and flowing as it was when we were younger. So um, our endothelial cells, which line our, our, our vascular system tend to become inflamed uh, just over time in general. And that basically takes our oxygen and blood flow from what used to be a raging river down to a traffic jam. And we're not getting as much oxygen delivery through our system as we used to, particularly in our youth. And we attribute that to a lot of disease, that inflammation limits oxygen delivery to the cell. So basically if the cell doesn't get oxygen, it can't do its job. And that's our whole body is just our cells. So the whole goal of why we're even talking about all this weird stuff is we want to increase the amount of oxygen to every single cell in our body. So it's optimal at the optimal levels and even even above optimal is our goal with LIVO2. So we looked at why, how can we do that? Well, like we talked, one option was hyperbaric. Then there was EWAT and which didn't really work as well. And then there's adaptive contrast, which is working phenomenally and, and easy to use and really accessible and affordable. So the way it works is it's pretty simple. You wear a mask while that makes a seal around your nose and your mouth. You raise your heart rate. Typically we'll use some type of exercise equipment like a, a spin bike or an elliptical. It doesn't really matter what we use. You could just even just do jumping jacks, whatever. Just get the heart rate, get the blood moving, get the heart, the respiration up. And then what we're doing is to, to get that respiration up, we'll usually flip the switch onto the low oxygen setting. So it's very easy to get your heart rate up. So, you know, just in a few minutes, your heart rate's rising, your respiration is rising and the CO2 in your blood is also rising. And then as soon as we get you to your body saying, I'm feeling challenged. Also with, with exposing yourself to hypoxia, your body is smart. It starts adapting. It says, we're not getting enough oxygen. So your body says, we need to vasodilate. We need to expand our lungs. We need to be more efficient with every single breath we take. Everything needs to be primed to get as much oxygen as we can because we're not having enough as we're used to having. We're tricking your body on the hypoxia. And then as soon as all of those physiological reactions have occurred and the heart rate is raised, we flip a switch and on the next breath, you're breathing in you know, 90 plus percent pure oxygen. And that magic moment, when we trigger that moment from the body screaming from oxygen to receiving more than it's ever had in its entire existence, is the magic moment where we're able to get a lot more oxygen dissolved into your blood plasma. When we put people on oxygen, they're actually only on oxygen, typically with most of the protocols for just a few breaths to maybe just a, a short amount of time, maybe just a minute or so. It's not exercise on oxygen for 20 minutes. We're challenging the body to need oxygen and then delivering it to it in a magic moment for a sh really short period of time get their oxygen saturations back to 100%. For me, it takes maybe three or four breaths to do that. And then right back to hypoxia. And, and by doing that back and forth and back and forth over about a 15 to 20 minute or so training session, we can increase the amount of total dissolved oxygen in a person's body by up to six times uh, what they typically may have. And this flood of oxygen causes an anti-inflammatory effect through their entire circulatory system and a lot of those inflamed endothelial cells, which it might have been you know, choked off and, and limiting circulation, when they receive this big flush of oxygenated blood plasma, they tend to flatten out and heal, literally reversing potentially decades of inflammation to our circulatory system in literally just one training session. And once all of those pipes are open, now we have all of this oxygen-rich blood plasma circulating through all these areas where it used to be dripping in and now it's rushing in like a river. And that's how we get these profound increases in cellular energy throughout the entire body. And people will typically do this um, you know, you can even just a couple sessions might have, you know, up to a year of benefit to someone. But if someone puts this in just a regular part of their their regular training schedule, you know, typically, you know, if you're being somewhat conscious of your health, you're going to exercise, you know, at least a couple times a week. And we're all busy with our lives. So why not just stack your regular exercise that you would do with something like Livo2 
get a more effective workout, get all of these anti-inflammatory benefits and all these energy benefits. It's basically just working a lot smarter and not so hard for a much better impact on your overall health and wellness. (sighs) 